creativity next. Um, I'm Narina McCleave. I'm a senior here at Wilson High School, and I will be your MC for this afternoon. We welcome anyone and everyone from the greater Portland area to this event. So what's in store for today? Well, we have some incredibly accomplished speakers who are ready to share with you all just exactly what they've learned about being creative and what it means to be creative. We call this event Creativity Next because it's about you or us, the next generation, and how we can create a better world for ourselves and others by tapping into our creative genius. Lastly, you should all have in your hands a program, a blank piece of paper, and a marker. Read the program, hold on to the rest, you'll find out why during Gary Hirsch's talk. Now let's get started. Anyone here ever uh, heard of Nike? Yes? No, maybe? Yeah, probably. Great, well our first speaker is our legendary designer from Nike. Wilson Smith has worked and developed products for many famous athletes. Yes, he knows everything from A to Z about shoes, but there's more than that. Architecture, retail, and really just the world of design. Welcome, Wilson. So much. Thank you. I'm honored. This is such a kick. There's nothing I can think of I'd rather do than to have a chance to talk with some of you here. And so this is an exciting time. I'm talking to you today about something I'm calling design think, which is getting out of the box. You know, often as designers, we need to know how to get out of the box. First, I need to get to the first slide. Um, but, but we need to know how to get out of the box of, of I would say sometimes there's almost designer box or designer blockage that'll happen. So design think is a way to get out of that, out of that box that we oftentimes can have. For example, we talk a lot of times about your brain, and you've probably heard people say, hey, there's left brain and right brain thinking, and we have a lot of respect for the left brain because that's the one that kind of makes all the money, and it's kind of the one that, that is kind of the, the grid, the, 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 the uh, form. But they say the right brain is the one that has all the fun. It's kind of the creative, expressive one. You look at those diagrams, it's art, it's music, it's, it's thespian, all of that is like right brain expression. And so, so it is, we're trying to unlock that right brain, that design think piece is what it's all about. And so, I want to use it by a way of an analogy of what we do in sports, a lot of times looking at analogies in sports. For example, you look at, this is a shot by Roger Federer, and Roger Federer is a um, you know, great tennis player, one of, his, one of his designers is actually here. But, but Roger Federer is an amazing tennis player, and, and what he does is he keeps his eye on the ball at all times. And so what this is about in design thinking is, to, is keeping your eye on the ball. It's amazing. You look at Roger and Tiger. In this case, they're looking at that spot where they actually hit the ball. Because if they know they can hit the ball right, that's going to be the best thing. Whenever a person drops the ball, often it's because they've taken their mind off of what is, what is essential, which is catching it. They may be thinking, oh no, this is an important moment, or no, no, this is like really critical right now. But if you take your mind off of that, that's where the problem happens. But if you just keep your eye on the ball, that's what it's all about. So the ball, in the case of design thinking, is the focus. It's what you're really focused on. Um, what, is, what is your end user is what the focus is all about. So you're thinking about who is it for? You're not thinking about just something for myself or something that just expresses me, but you're really thinking about that end user. You're thinking about who it's for. And so then you describe who it's for, and then you go, you draw, you make, you test, try to get it right. Hey, if it's right there, home run. If not, you go back, draw, make, test again, or you go back and describe it again, or maybe even go back and look at the focus again. So it's all about trying to make that understanding. So what I want to do is blow up that whole thought of the focus on that end user. You know, the focus is like you're having a real, you have an affinity, an empathy, you have a, a passion towards that end user person. But thinking about that, I think you can blow it up by saying, what's the spark, explore, and the mix? There's opportunities to really feed into this end user that you're focused on. So spark, for example, just to kind of explain to you what these are, Spark to me is what's inspiring you? What's it all about? And it often ties into who you are. In fact, Spark does come directly from who you are, and then that's how you get, you get the inspiration. So your tie needs to be to that folks of the end user. For example, I'll tell Milo's story here. We're just your 
This is me growing up. You know, I love to play with building blocks, have a lot of fun with those, you know. Um, there I am again on the porch. This is this was Wilsonville. I drew this when I was like in about seventh grade. And then there I am and growing up a little bit. My fro starts to grow a little at the end of grade school. Fro got huge in high school. So that's kind of my journey. My sister and I loving loving music, loving the Jackson Fives, greatest hits. That was my parents at structures class down at U of O. So I loved architecture. Got to study over in London, which was really cool. And then um, eventually Seattle. I love to sketch and draw. I love to paint. There's a lot of different things that I've done in my life. So then that led towards working for a major architecture firm. Came to work for Nike. And then eventually Nike moved me into designing products, shoes, which is the first shoe I worked on. And we sold about as many as on top of that table. That was my first, my first experience at Nike. And then since then, there's been things like this was kind of last week. They took one of my shoes and turned it into a couch. So who knows? All kinds of things happen. So it's kind of a fun career. But so that's what I would say is first the spark. And just to move to the next thought, I want to talk about explore. This is really opening up the box, getting out of the box, being completely focused on that end user, focused on the person or the thing that you're designing. And I want to talk to you about a program called Adaptive Products, um, Adaptive Design for Athletes um, at, at U of O, for Adaptive Athletes. And we've been working with uh, several students for the last eight or so years. And I want to tell you about working with an adaptive athlete and, and one of the student designs, which is pretty exciting. This is a guy, Will Grow. He's a wheelchair rugby, amazing wheelchair rugby player. And uh, there was a movie put out called Murder Ball, which, which was all about wheelchair rugby. Well, these guys really, really go for it. But it's amazing. Will is actually paralyzed from the chest down. And so he is a wounded warrior from the war. And, 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 but then sport has been this a real healing, wonderful thing in his life. And so we're trying to figure out how can we design something that would even help enhance his will, who's a great uh, wheelchair rugby player, how can we help him even better? And so one of the designers, a student, realized that when Will was moving, uh, he would kind of be moving all around because he didn't have any sternum control in his chair. And so Ryan, uh, Ryan Fiorentino, designed this Concorde vest which wrapped around his body and locked into the chair. So what you could really do is you could leverage the chair and there's no longer that movement, but the chair really begins to leverage his core of his body. So it was a really cool design. This is Ryan himself actually you know, testing and, and getting the right kind of strapping system, which is what design thingy is all about. It's about becoming that end user that you're focusing on. So it's about really identifying with that. Well, anyway, um, Will, Will liked his vest and five other people on his team did. And uh, there is kind of this undergarment, actually you can't see here, but it's a, kind of the blue shirt that's undergarment. And they ended up actually winning a bronze medal in the 2012 Olympics. And so it was kind of cool, a design that started in January that year, uh, by, by the August, by the 2012 Olympics, they actually had a bronze medal. So that was a fun, fun detail. We even worked with this team again this last 2016, and we designed these gloves. And so the whole team was working on, the class was working on gloves. And, and there's really a great experience that way. So that's, that's an example of really getting in trying to think about what the exploration is. And I just want to tell you a little bit about the whole notion of mix. Mix is the opportunities that happen when you bring other things from the outside in as an inspiration. It's just like remixing music. Say, you know, two different, like an old song and a new song, you mix it together. We love remixes. They're like amazing. Uh, and a, an example that really takes it though is say if you mix American history with hip hop. And I'm going to share a little bit of that right now. How does a bastard, orphan, son of a whore, and a Scotsman dropped in the middle of a forgotten spot in the Caribbean by providence impoverished squalor grow up to be a hero and a scholar of my the ten dollar founding father without a father got a lot farther by working a lot harder by being a lot smarter by being a self-starter by 14. They placed him in charge of a trading charter. And every day while slaves were being slaughtered and cartered away across the waves, he struggled to keep his guard up. Inside, he was longing for something to be a part of. The brother was ready to beg, steal, borrow, or barter. Then a hurricane came and devastation reigned. A man saw his future drip, dripping down the drain. 
put a pencil to his temple, connected it to his brain, and he wrote his first refrain, a testament to his pain. When the word got around, they said, this kid's insane, man. Took up a collection just to send him to the mainland. Get your education, don't forget from when she came, and the world's gonna know your name. What's your name, man? Alexander Hamilton. All right, just a little. But that's, that's an example, though, what I love of what Remix is all about because that's a new way of education and you can really learn all about it. Well, similarly, there was a Remix that happened at Roosevelt High School, which was a total kick. And, you know, that's our, our favorite school in North, uh, way North Portland. And it was pretty exciting at Roosevelt there was a great need. It was like the school, this was about, about 2009, 2008, and the, the track was condemned, um, the, the lockers were almost uninhabitable. Um, there was a lot of just real, uh, the school was down below 500 people, they were about ready to close it. It was really in a, in a not a good, good situation. So it was a great need at Roosevelt High School. Well, I will tell you a story about it in terms of a remix. There was a team, a guy named Kevin, and so Kevin, Kevin Palau came over uh, actually to me at Nike and he said, he said, hey, we're, um, we want to do a summer of service to the community and we want it to be all about schools or about homelessness or, or you know, to solve some, do some per problems or just like some, um, you know, service. And so it was exciting and, and Intel, other companies were involved. So he said, what could Nike possibly do? So we got together a few, um, few of my friends at Nike and one of them was this guy, Mike Bergman in the lower left corner and, and Bergman, um, had his help me Obi-Wan Kenobi kind of uh, message and he pulled it out of his, his Blackberry and said, hey, there's a guy, Rich Rucker, who is the um, development director at Roosevelt and he's got a need over there. So, so um, Roosevelt has issues. So Kevin actually went to, um, also went to Pastor Kip, who's pastor of my church, and he said, hey, would you want to be involved in, we might do a cleanup day at Roosevelt. And, Pastor Kip says, hey, I'm all in, I'm into it. So this whole team kind of came together organically, different people serving their role. Well, we had a cleanup day at Roosevelt. Over 1,500 people showed up from Nike, from, from the church, uh, from, from the community. Everybody was all together and doing a cleanup day. And we saved the school $40,000 worth of uh, maintenance in that one morning. And so then after that, we just maintain a relationship. It's not something that you do once, but you keep it ongoing. And so anyway, the community was inspired, the school was transformed, it was amazing. They started even, because people were, you know, there's, there's a saying that says, you're more influenced by the people who believe in you than the people you believe in. Because people believed in these young people were focusing on that end user. Because of that, the school starts winning PLL championships and a lot of, they come up from nowhere and it's really great. Well, this energy really excites Nike and so they were really excited about it. So next thing you know, we, um, we get in there and we actually put in a track and it ends up being the track in the field ends up being the best track north of Hayward Field in Eugene. And so now University of Portland uses the Roosevelt track and all the, all the excitement, the schools really flourish. I mean, it's flourishing. I mean, it's still got challenges, a lot of other challenges, and this is an ongoing thing, but it's flourishing infinite, uh, infinitely better. Uh, former President Obama has a $93 million program going on right now in the school in remodeling it. So all of this energy together creates what I would call that mix. So just to tell you about that, create, I just wanted to say that uh, in conclusion, it's all about the focus. It's all about what it's about. In that case, it was the young people. In this case, it's you. And today is your day. And so that's the focus. But it's all about spark, explore, and mix. Get out of the box when you're going creative, all right? All right, thank you.